Hi, my name is Ravina Bakru. I'm a senior at UC San Diego enrolled in the BioClock Studio, and today I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Phyllis Z. Yeah, I chose neurology because I was actually interested in circadian rhythms as a graduate student. So I started in being very interested in the brain, how these uh, circadian rhythms and how specific areas of the brain regulated these, these rhythms, but also very importantly, how it re regulated other brain functions. And therefore, neurology was just a perfect, I think, mix between where I could do neuroscience and really pursue both basic and translational neuroscience, at the same time, have this platform, a clinical platform, where I could actually translate that and apply that. And also from the standpoint of a clinician, neurology allows me to actually see what's really going on in the field, what are the needs of these patients, and then use that to also ask scientific questions in the laboratory. So most of the studies that we've done with light and metabolism and body weight have uh, so far been done in young people rather than older people, although we do have plans to study this in a new, new study in older individuals. We have found that those individuals who get more morning light, especially brighter morning lights, tend to have lower body weight compared to those who are getting light later uh, in the afternoon or certainly in the evening. We've also found that uh, timing of eating is important for body weight regulation. And as you know, timing of eating is also associated with timing of light. We're usually not eating in, in the darkness. We've also done some really recent experiments that show that even just if you're eating in an environment that is very bright, for example, in the morning, that actually decreases your appetite in the morning. But if you were to have that bright light in the evening, you're eating dinner, that actually that light in the evening increases your appetite. So not only the amount of light is important, but the timing of light could have very different effects at different times of the day. I am very committed to teaching and, and education because I do believe that being able to transmit my enthusiasm for my field is, is very important. So a good memory would be when I was, I, I still teach a, um, the medical students in their very first year. So it's the first year where they're very hungry for anything potentially clinical because they're getting most of the basic sciences at that time, is that um, I, I see people lighting up. and They go, oh, I see how this is relevant to you. So as I teach, I change my tune as to how the class is reacting to that. And every time that I think, well, I'm not gonna teach this course again, or why should I, I'm so busy, I'm reminded that if one person in that entire class gets turned on to sleep in circadian rhythms research or becomes a clinician in the area, it's definitely worthwhile. And I have had several experiences when somebody's come up to me who now is a very prominent researcher or clinician in the field and said, I remember when you taught that course 15 years ago and I was in the audience. So I, I think this is one of the great, it's, it's wonderful to give, but it really keeps reinforcing me the need to, to teach. I think gender is, uh, continues to be an issue in science and especially in, in, in the STEMS area that we have made great strides in, in having more women being represented in the sciences, and in fact, uh, more women get PhDs than uh, perhaps even men uh, today. The challenge is to get them into positions of leadership and in, in retaining women in science. My personal experience has been, um, I think in general, very favorable. I don't think I have been necessarily 
discriminated against because I'm a woman. But there, but where you begin to see this is as you rise higher and higher in administrative positions. When you're on tenure committees, for example, uh, and or higher administrative, where there becomes, you can begin to see less and, and, and less women in these positions. But I think that we shouldn't be thinking about, well, because I'm a woman, I should be in this position or other position. I think you have to be very strong advocates for women. And, uh, and just do your best, and do your best. It, there, there are very, uh, I think, important courses that one can take that are available uh, for women to be more assertive, to be able to articulate uh, their vision. And I think if you do that, and you are a, you know, and you do great work, you work hard, and you're able to articulate your vision and your plan, then uh, I think things will come. It's been, uh, you know, it's a pro it's a it, it's a it's it's a work in progress. Always, it's a work in progress. I do a lot of administrative things. I am a medical director also for the sleep center, a research director, and then also now kind of a administrator for the for the center. But what I found most important is that you have something that you're passionate about. You have a vision and a plan of where you're going, and you keep pushing that, and they will listen.